if you're gripping this racket like this, it's even hurting while I do that, and you play a lot of tennis, it's bound to get sore, okay? I really want to encourage you guys, if you're playing tennis, 10 out of 10 is the, is the, is the tightest grip. Go to 40%, 4 out of 10. Just get the racket loose. Keep training. If the pain is bearable, focus on that. In two weeks' time, your arm will feel better. I'm not going to hit this ball hard. I'm just going to stroke it. You end up getting power because you're just not trying to hit it hard, okay? As soon as you start trying to hit the ball hard, oftentimes you get less power, less accuracy, obviously. But try this out the next time you play. I'm going to hit the ball and I'm not going to hit it hard and see what happens. Sometimes a lot of players do this on their serve as well. They just try and stroke it and they, try and they end up getting record power serves. I'm not trying to hit this ball hard. Let me see what happens. Get so much power when everything is relaxed. Like a lazy feeling, legs are activated, but it's like a lazy feeling. <sighs> Gotta turn your shoulders, turn into the hips, into the legs, and then the legs, into the hips, into the shoulders, into the racket will give you power. But problem is you're not gonna have time to think about shoulders, legs, hips, shoulders, hips, legs, it's just too much. So what works so well for me is by simply thinking activate your legs now I'll explain to you why that works because it's almost impossible not to activate your biomechanics if your legs are low so if I focus on my legs being activated my legs low I have to almost turn to swing properly okay the only way you can't turn is if your legs are straight so it's easy for me when my legs are straight it's easy for me to get away with not activating the biomechanics because then it's just the arm okay now, if I just think about get low, I am forced to turn everything off. Short swing, get away with this, okay? Important though, when you do go short to swing on the short ball, make very sure there should be a stage where your racket is still going up through the ball, and then you release. I'll show you one more. So you're not going straight down, you're still going up, but then you can have a shorter swing. So let's talk about uh, the J slice, Federer. He starts very high, and then obviously he does a little chop, and it's like a J, my personal favorite. Uh, it's advanced, so be careful because it's a big, big, big lift. You hit down on the ball, and then you stop it, okay? If you get it right, there's a lot of shoot, the ball stays down, it's very effective. Let's see if I can do it. I use this a lot in matches. Notice the little J there, so I start up, then I hit down on it, and then you try and knife it down. Up, and one more there, Coach Bren. Very high, there, yeah, it's a perfect one. Watch that ball shooting through. The reason why it's a bit risky is because you're starting high, and it's not a big swing. So they go back, and they hit it lower with the net, so risky. They go back and hit it low. You such a big risk hitting it in the net, okay? So notice, the thing you want to do is on the high ball, look at where it's coming from, hit it back in the same direction, okay? So I'm going back, looking at it, back in the same direction. Automatically the ball goes deep and the other player doesn't get the benefit. One more there, Coach Brent. So coming from high, hit it back up, same direction. That player is in trouble, and he's looking for a short ball, but he's not getting it. It's extremely obvious that your, your forehand is, the timing is brilliant. You got a natural feel for the ball, but you're lacking on a little bit of topspin and power by simply limiting your turn too much. I know some of the pros, it looks like they're turning here, but if you watch closely, Right before, when they start swinging forward, the racket does release that way, releases so there can be more power and spin. And, you know what I mean? So yeah. I want you to try, when you prepare, can you just feel like you're a little bit bigger? A little bit bigger at the back before you release? Oh yeah! Yes, it's gonna feel a little bit odd maybe. Yes, doesn't have to be crazy, just a little bit. That's, it's almost like, yes. Uh, she would, 
she would turn with her arms a lot, right? So her arms go away from her and then from there, it's only arms. So what I asked her to do is get the racket head up. Elbows a little bit tucked in, but not like stuck. Just a little bit tucked in. It creates that V, okay? So then what does this do, Lissetti, just to remind you is now it's going to force you to turn your shoulders. It's going to force you to turn your shoulders, your hips, then the racket will drop and hit. Because if you let the arms go away from you too much, it's only arms and there's no need to turn. Does it make sense? Let's check it out. Stop with the V. Beautiful. Go. Yes. V. Beautiful. V. And again. V. So now, just show the audience from there, how do you rotate your upper body? Boom. And then drop hip. There we go. Because now you get a lot more power out of your hips if the whole upper body turns instead of just the arms. Am I right? Okay, it's better. I think you have more power. But did you know that the more you pull your body, the more you pull your head, the more you lose power. Okay, you feel like you're getting power, but you're actually breaking the chain. So what I want you to do is, power comes from the legs, hips, shoulders, but it only works if you get it into the racket. Now, if you pull your head down, it doesn't get into the racket because you're pulling everything down. So I want you to imagine legs and then let your racket be very loose like he's throwing a rope. He's throwing a rope, but then keep your head still eh? like Roger Federer. There. Okay. It was a lot of power, but I, I want to show you one good one though. Head. Still. See the power? I don't need to pull my head. Boom. Don't need to pull my head. Ball there, Coach Bren. You're going to have to go a lot lower over the net because the court is a lot smaller. Show them quickly where the ball's going. And again, two more. Notice, low over the net. <sighs> Boom. Also, that takes time away from your opponent. He's gonna feel a rush. You go to the net and finish the point. One more there, Coach Bryn. Short ball, you have to go. Low over the net. Boom, finish the point. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna overdo tip number two. Okay. Because if we can get your swing more loose, more fluent, we're in business. So remember I said, before you serve, try and get your racket down. Now, let's make it even bigger. Focus on getting the tip of your racket down, pointing to the back fence. Boom, but obviously, one motion. Okay. One motion. Your back end is very, very advanced. Okay, not much. But if I had to give you something to improve it, maybe with like 5%, one thing you can do is, is maybe get more weight on your back leg. So when you set up, instead of just setting up like that, feel like you're almost loading, generating power, and then step in. Okay. okay? Yeah. And number two is, I'm not going to give you anything else. Number two is sometimes, again, similar to your forehand, because you've got so much talent, it's easy for you just to flick the ball. I want you to, instead of just flicking, feel just feel your left elbow rising a bit on the finish instead of going like this. Okay. That's going to help you with power, you're going to hit more through the ball, more spin, everything. Two things, eh? Yeah. Left leg a bit lower before you move into it, finish high with elbow. Go. And again, check your left elbow, it's very important. Yes, but still go forward as you do that. Nice! Make sure you're not popping up. Much better, much better. First thing is, if you have a good slice, brilliant. Nothing wrong with a deep, low slice. But you must consider, if your opponent's getting used to it, use the shorter slice. It's not really a drop shot, but it's a shorter low one, which means they have to run forward and pick it up. So here's the normal slice, very, very effective. So if you like this slice, nice and deep, nothing wrong with that. On that note, I've got many videos on the slice. Just search my YouTube. Now instead of just going deep, consider using this one. A little bit shorter and low. So it's not a drop shot, but it's a very, very uncomfortable shot for your opponent to, to retrieve. Oh, there we go. And it actually, it's a little bit easier. It takes less effort. And it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to do something with it. So here's the deep one. A little bit more through the court and then Mix it up with the shorter, especially cross court. Especially cross court. Also not a bad idea to go forward on the low short one. Forward on the low short one and then wait for the volley. Boom.
Hero champ, so I work in threes, so I'm not going to give you more than three. The yeah. first thing is just show me your grip. Not changing anything, but it's full western, right? Yeah. Nothing wrong, a lot of players use it. So just remember, when you use full western, the disadvantage is that you can't afford to hit the ball late. The later you go, it's almost impossible. So you have to hit it early. The advantage is obviously a lot more rip, a lot more spin. Yeah. So try out, just for a couple of, couple of contact points, how early can you hit it out in front? You'll get more on it without losing your brush. Cool. Okay. Yes. Yes. Even if it feels like your arm is almost straight on contact, nothing wrong. Yes. So good. And again. Nothing wrong. Let's go. Two more. Yes, that's fine. But we'll go through. The first is the continental one, extremely flat. Then you go on to eastern forehand. Then you go on to semi western. And then you move on to full western. And there's also a grip called Hawaiian, which is number six, all the way over, which is crazy. Almost impossible to hit. So if I'm upright, I'm gonna start forcing to get power. But if I'm down, I'm getting power from the ground, from my legs, and I don't need to force to get power. Also getting more spin on the wide ball if I'm staying down, okay? Second reason is power spin. You need to stay down. Watch all the pros with the big slices when they turn. And this is quite common for left-handed players. I'm not sure why. Maybe because the arm might feel a bit weaker. But your right hand is on the grip, okay? Which is a problem. So what this does is it loosens up your wrist too much. It's very easy for that ball to, to, to go up or go wherever. Number two, it also, it's a lot weaker. So if you lift your right hand up to the throat of the racket, turn high, you're gonna get a lot more on it, more control. So all the throat, it's gonna feel a lot different. And again. Nice. Yes. Yes. How does that feel, champ? Oh, it feels 